Okay, so we're coming up on top of descent. It's about uh, just beyond 20 miles out, but uh, that can uh, we can cover a lot of ground in that amount of, or it doesn't take much time rather to cover 20 plus miles. So I want to start on the descent checklist, and I'm going to start with pressurization, and that's going to be uh, zero for San Fran. And I'm going to recall. We're clear on the recall. Auto brakes. I'm going to select two for auto brakes. Landing data. Our VREF is going to be 134. Minimums is 113. So I'm going to set that. And uh, on the EFIS, make sure you get your uh, radio set before you start dialing in your uh, value so I got to set uh, 113 decision height which is all right there's radio set to 113 so that's done and uh, so now I want to cover that's uh, landing data I want to cover the approach briefing will complete the descent checklist so I'm going to do the approach briefing now preset this for altimeters at 18,000 feet and let's see so We've got about 15 miles to go, so let's call up the electronic flight bag. Uh, this is going to be an ILS to runway 28 right. We're going to do a CAT 3. And the CAT 3, we've got 113 feet uh, radar altitude. There's 1,200 uh, RVRs required for the visibility. And the frequency is 111.7. The inbound course is 284. Because the FSX, SFX database and my FMS database are a little mismatched, um, it's going to end up actually, I'm going to use 283 for the inbound course uh, to get it to work correctly. Uh, the missed approach, uh, just a minute, ATC is calling. Um, we've been cleared down to 14, so let me... I acknowledge that and I'll set 14. That'll set us up for an auto descent as we get close. Now I'll get back to finishing up the briefing. You want to take a look at the missed approach procedure. We do have uh, patchy fog. Visibility and RVR uh, readings are going in and out. So may have to execute a missed approach. So we'll get down there and see uh, how foggy it is on, on final. But if we have to make a miss, it's climb uh, straight ahead to 3,000 feet on the SFO VOR on the 281 uh, radio, which will be an outbound course to Yaiku intersection. I think that's how you pronounce that. Uh, and that's 12 DME out of the SFO VOR and hold. So uh, that's right here. So that's the hold. And... Um, now we're watching the top of descent. We're just coming up on it. Now the um, I wanted to mention the um, Menlo is where the star actually ends, and Sippen right here is where it picks up for the uh, instrument approach, and that's only a 4.4 mile segment. We're starting down. Retard. That's only a 4.4. There's our throttles coming back. 4.4 uh, segment. So. I'm going to, on my uh, ILS uh, cheat sheet here, I'm going to actually be tuning and identifying the nav radios <laughs> out of sequence from this is the Boeing standard because there's just not going to be enough time with 4.4 miles flying single pilot IFR. So I'm going to get some of this stuff done ahead of time, meaning before Menlo, before I do uh, f uh, flaps extension. So I'm going to do that right here before... Menlo and um, to try to get a little bit ahead of the game so that's um, that takes care of the approach briefing so once again the descent checklist is complete and now we're waiting for the approach and let's take a look we're coming up on um, Big Sur, still coming up on Big Sur. Then we're going to make a slight right turn to Kearney. Kearney is going to be 311 on the heading. Let's take a peek outside and see what that looks like. Yeah, not. 
I see some clouds down below us and some real, real vague city lights. So uh, still pretty dark out, but we're we're still pretty far out from uh, city lights of San Fran. All right, so now we're heading to uh, Carmi. It's about 18 miles in front of us. I I don't know if I'm going to actually run the video all the way up to the um, uh, end of the star. There's not. It's a little bit boring. There's not much going on. I may so you may see some edits as I move us a little bit closer. Uh, hop <laughs> hop a little bit closer just to kind of uh, take up some of the dead time. So we're coming uh, up through 22. I'll uh, I'll be watching for 18, where I'm going to switch us back to our standard uh, barrel 2992 reading. Here comes 21,000, and we are coming up on 19,000 feet. I'm going to switch us over <laughs> to standard right now, in case I forget. So that's got a set uh, for passing 18. We're starting our turn. Now we're heading to uh, Angie, about 18 miles in front of us. All right, so the descent is looking pretty good. We're still on a great vertical profile. We've got skunk. The waypoint skunk showing up at the top of the ND. There's two deceleration donuts. Uh, that's the slowest down at skunk. We're going to be dropping below 10,000 feet, so we need to be at 250 or below. So those are our deceleration donuts for that. So I have um, I have some quiet time right now, a little bit of time. So in a few minutes, I'm going to turn on the exterior lights. I'll do that as we start to pass uh, 16,000 and um, I've got to clear my <laughs> clear my screen display so I can get to the switches on the overhead. So we're coming up on 16 so I'm just gonna turn on the uh, outside lights, continuous ignition, uh, logos are on, strobes, collision, the wing light takes care of that. So, All right, so we've got the outside lights on now. And we are about six miles from Angie. And then we've got a 16-mile segment going into Skunk where we will start our deceleration just prior to Skunk and then should be on speed just after passing it. And let's see, we did the uh, altimeters are set. 299 or 2 is the current setting. So we'll preset this and get set for the landing checklist. And ATC is just called and clear, cleared us to 3, 3,000 feet. So I'll set the MCP altitude down to 3. And that is the, on our approach plate, that is our SEP and intersection uh, intercept altitude 3,000 feet. So we're all set pretty good shape there for that. Still on a, on a good uh, vertical profile. So we're coming up on uh, Skunk. We've got about just under five miles till we get that first deceleration donut for 246. And I think we've got just about a mile to go before we hit that donut. We'll watch the uh, speed bug drop down to 246 and enunciate up here. And there we go. 
There it is, 240. So now we are doing a slight uh, pitch up to slow down to 240. We are coming up on 10,000 feet, so it's going to hold us at 250. And uh, I think the uh, vertical profile will have us crossing 10,000 right at 250. It's, it'll be pretty close. We're right on vertical profile. There's drag required. I think we're OK. I'm going to clear that. Our flaps up uh, reference is VREF for flaps 40 is plus 70. So that's um, two zero. It looks like about two zero four. So we're passing through ten. We're under two fifty. So now we're heading to uh, Boulder at two fifty. And then once we pass uh, Boulder, we've got a 18 mile segment where I'm going to get the nav radios tuned. So I'll have plenty of time then to tune and identify the nav radios and get that set up. So I'm actually going to, on my ILS notes, I'm going to actually, <laughs> I'm going to do some of this, uh, some of these procedures here first before. I do flaps one, flaps five. Okay, about three miles to go to Boulder. The deceleration donut that we see here is for Menlo to slow us down to cross Menlo at 206. And uh, it'll be just somewhere before that donut. I'll put out flaps one. And here comes Menlo into view. I still, I still don't think we need any drag. Our vertical profile is still looking pretty good. Let's see what it looks like outside. Well, we've got a little bit of uh, city lights down there below us we can see. All right, so Menlo is now 16 in front of us. So I'm going to wait a while to tune and identify the ILS. Uh, frequency will be 111.7, and we'll double, double check that on the chart. 111.7, or inbound course is 284. Sixty four hundred feet on our descent. Seppin's just coming into view now. That's the uh, beginning of our approach. So I'm going to go ahead and go heads down into the console and dial in our ILS frequencies. One eleven point seven. One eleven. Point seven. Let's tune and identify a knit ref ILS two eight right is the course one eleven point seven two eighty three inbound. So I will set that. Oops. Two eighty three. All right, both sides are set. All 
All right, so the radials have been tuned and identified. Course is set on both sides. And we've got localizer and glide slope needles are showing. So I'm waiting on um, I'm waiting to get a little bit closer to Menlo before I uh, put out the flaps. So we are decelerating a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and call uh, for flaps one. And as soon as I get green, I'll go to flaps five. There's leading edges are out. Flaps five. And we are waiting to be cleared for the approach. And we've just received clearance, so we are close enough where uh, we'll get glide slope arm. So I'm going to go ahead and press APP, arm VOR loc. There's glide slope arm, and engage the second autopilot. And I'm going to keep an eye on localizer alive. So we've been cleared for the approach. Approaching Seppin to start the ILS. So there's localizer capture, there's glide slope capture. So I'm going to go flaps 15. Gear down. I'm going to bug the speed down to VREF plus 5, 139, and we'll go to flaps 40, localizer capture, so inbound 283 on the heading, arm the speed brakes, there we are, we just caught the little green light right here. And we need landing flaps. We're going to go to 40. Set missed approach altitude 3,000 feet. It's already set. And we're going to do the landing checklist. Engine start switches. Take a quick check of those. They're continuous. Speed brakes are armed. Landing gear is down. Three green flaps, 40 green light. Before landing checklist is complete, get up into a position here just can just barely see I don't know if you can see it in the video I can just barely see some lights right about in this area here so uh, we've just been cleared for the approach so we're flying VREF plus 5 139 on localizer on glide slope about 2,000 feet AGL and we are looking for 7.4 on the DME and that's going to be our call we'll check this right here that's uh, Oxmal on the approach that's our final approach fix and should be about 1,800 feet 7.4 uh, 7 altitude checks and no flags there's the outer marker inbound 
tower has cleared us to land. I'm going to set the uh, first officer's ND there. Here's the autopilot self checks for the auto land. And we got off on the course somehow. I'm not sure. There's land three. I'm not sure what caused that. My course uh, was set to 282 for some reason. There's land three. So we got rollout arm and flare arm. And I've lost the lights through the windshield. Uh, so we do have some patchy fog, apparently. 1,000 feet AGL. Got localizer nailed right on the money. Glide slopes right on the money. Before landing checklist is complete. Coming up on our 500 foot auto land call, 200 to go. And I still don't see anything out through the windshield. 600 feet. I'll have to be prepared for a go around. This might be a real, real dicey approach, real tight. There's 500 feet auto land, land three, continue. And the runway environment is in sight. There's the rabbit. Lead in lights. Two hundred and fifty feet. Middle marker coming up on decision height, one hundred and thirteen feet. Land. And touchdown. Going into full reverse. And 70 knots coming out of reverse. And on the brakes. All right, there we go. Okay, so this concludes the flight demo for LNAV. If you have any questions or comments, send an email to me at the address shown on the screen. And thank you very much for your attention.